This is Echo 3, and by request, let's discuss how to make a tracked vehicle in Kerbal Space Program. You can use mods that have tracks in them, but for this tutorial I will just be using the base game and the Breaking Ground DLC. This structural panel will just make it easier when I want to copy and paste some parts later on. So right now I'm going to work on the right side by placing this servo over here. and. This servo will have full rotation and that will let me have the craft go forward and backwards with normal world controls. We'll throw on these cubic struts and put on these grip pads on those and this then will be the drive sprocket for our tracks. So I'm going to use some the big hinges on this and so I'm going to kind of use two sets of the struts or of the cubic struts here and that will just make it easier for our drive sprocket. And I'm going to copy and paste this servo and save it here on the other side for the time being so I can work on some other things. Now I need to grab a separatron and the separatron is kind of the key for how this works. The separatron then will decouple and then the track itself will become a separate craft. It's kind of weird um, because now we're actually having three crafts that are moving but that's how this all works. Make sure you have same vessel interaction on the grip pads and on these hinges because before they're decoupled they will want to sag and if they are not set, if they are not set to same vessel interaction then they will clip into each other and you'll have a mess. So these hinges then are not going to be powered and I'm going to put some grip pads on them as well and this is going to be our our track. Now I'm just going to copy and paste these hinges out and this starts to look like a tracked vehicle. Now I'm going to move the second servo over but I'm going to this little trick I found I'm going to put one of these uh, pistons down and with this then I will be able to stretch out the servos and then actually have some better tension on the tracks. I built one of these recently and showed it on Reddit, but I didn't uh, have a way to stretch out the tracks themselves and they kind of sag down a little bit. This is going to make it work just a little better. Uh, I've seen others and they didn't do this. You don't have to have uh, these pistons there to put tension on the track like this. It can work if it's sagging. I just found it worked a little better. Now I'm going to take these hinges and I'm going to start to angle them around. So I have to set the angle on the hinge here. And if you don't use the pistons like I do, you're going to want to get this as tight as possible around the servo. It just so you don't have a lot of issues and this worked pretty well for me then I just kind of curve it around and this then is the basis for my tracks and I'll just be able to copy and paste a few more of these parts together and we'll go all the way around now what I'm going to do here is just keep keep going around uh, I'm going to actually have three sets of, of servos, not just the two you're seeing here now. I'm just getting the, the basis started for this. I just want to see kind of exactly where I need to be. With this much done, um, actually I'm using the, uh, the number function here. I'm just trying to make sure this gets straight because I need this to start going straight back then. That just It'll just be easier that way. So, and actually in this case, I'm just going to copy and paste these top ones as well. Just make it a little easier on me. There we go. Now I'm going to copy and paste this entire track structure over. And that way I also know it will be completely even. So everything will line up. If you just go all the way around without doing this copy and paste, I can't guarantee you know, you'll end up even. Uh, and there might be a gap between the last two tracks. Anyway, this helps solve that. And the last track and the first track will need to be strutted together. With the struts like that, then when this is decoupled, it will all hold together as one unit. 
because you can't you know link parts back together with the way the tree branch nature of these parts work so that's just kind of what I did to get around that is you just strut those pieces together I see I'm not quite even I'm just gonna move this a little bit so my tracks are then even and when the servos push on it or when, sorry when the uh, pistons push on this then it'll have uh, solid tension you can see there's quite a gap between parts right now I definitely don't want anything to clip uh, now I've copied the first side and I am pasting it over here on the other side and I'm just gonna move that a little bit that's that's why I put that structural panel in the first place just so I could grab it and copy and paste the entire section over now I'm just gonna kind of put things where I think they should go um, overall it's it's looking like we're gonna work out pretty well I'm gonna have to get things here even that that looks about right now we need to add uh, actually we're gonna have to add a lot of other things to this to make it work right and those servos are going to take a lot of power so we'll have to think about how much uh, we're gonna need for electricity and all that kind of stuff I'm just binding the pistons here to one of the translation controls it, it'll just make it easier I can push them all out at the same time uh, you don't have to do that it's just gonna make it easier for me now I'm gonna throw some structural panels down because this is going to be three separate crafts uh, I need to be able to keep the tracks in line um, they weren't they're not gonna be connected to this other craft so by just throwing a few structural panels down uh, they'll want to kind of stay in in the in the place there between the two structural panels and I won't have as many issues I'm also gonna make liberal use of struts just to make sure everything stays together well uh, I just found this gets a little tricky and things will want to wobble so lots of struts I don't really use auto struts for most of this but lots of struts now this is the Cal 1000 and I'm gonna bind the servos themselves to the Cal 1000 this is gonna make driving it really easy and then the Cal 1000 is bound to the wheel throttle now the Cal is set to repeat so as it keeps going it's going to repeat its action so I place this down and I can see that the one servo is going the right direction when played forward and I'll copy and paste it and now I need to check now this is not how it's actually going to drive but it just lets me know that they're turning the right way I can see the one on the other side is turning backwards so I'll just flip it here on the Cal 1000 that looks correct and there we go everything is driving correctly now when I decouple those separate uh, when I decouple those uh, pieces the tracks then will operate correctly now we have to add quite a few other things on this we're gonna need more structural panels we are going to need power and we're gonna to need to think about how exactly this is going to turn I could try setting this up to make each side break to turn how like a real track vehicle would or in this case I'm gonna go simple and just put a reaction wheel down here and the reaction wheel will be powerful enough to turn the craft although I don't think one is gonna end up being powerful enough I'll probably need to put another one down just to have enough torque to turn the craft the one I highlighted on reddit uh, a few days ago it just needed one of the medium size reaction wheels and that was enough to, to turn it easily this is a much bigger craft and so it's probably gonna need a lot more those servos take a lot of power so I've put down 16 of the RTGs and even still it's gonna use electricity faster than it produces it I have copied and pasted the structural panels on the one side and I'm gonna put them here over on the other side just to help guide the tracks and keep them from slipping off of our sprockets and that that should be adequate here that's that's really all I need to do is just kind of have a little bit of a, a guide for them so they'll want to just travel where they're supposed to now mostly this craft is completed uh, because I've copied and pasted I do need to double check and make sure that my uh, here we go these struts are in the right place and they 
they needed reset here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and fix that. Uh, just I need to double check something, which happens when you copy and paste things. Sometimes struts get a little weird. So I'm going to pull these both sides apart and look. And there we go. Right. Now that, that's been corrected there. Um, I think I need to add a few more things here to make sure it works right. Uh, I definitely need another uh, of the reaction wheels and probably some more struts just to really help make sure this stays together while it's moving around. Uh, definitely need to make sure that no struts are cutting in front of the servos. Let's see. Let's add. There we go. Just some more struts. Um, this this is a really weird craft, and, and when you're decoupling things like this, it, it's just going to get a little weird. So uh, just double check things. Uh, make sure everything's working right. And I, I don't know. I can't really emphasize the use of struts enough when you're doing something like this. Lots of struts. Add another one of these reaction wheels on here. Uh, I found that one wasn't enough to have this thing turn properly, so I put a, a second one on, and now the craft will be able to turn. If you make a smaller one, you won't need as much reaction wheels. Alright, so all I do is I put some tension on the tracks, and now I decouple, and we can drive. Um, and this works fine with the normal con rover controls. So. It seems to be working fine, and I can turn it. That's the reaction wheels causing it to turn. It doesn't go fast. This one goes 1.5 meters per second. The uh, previous one I made only went one meter per second, so this has a little bit more speed. Probably with rotors, I could go faster. Uh, someone asked, can you take this under the water? Well, I tried taking this particular one under the water, and it floated. I was a little surprised how well this thing floated. Um, didn't think it had that much buoyancy. I added a lot of extra weight to it in the form of war tanks to try to, you know, how you might make a submarine or something, and it still floated pretty well, so I need to do more work to make this an underwater exploration craft. I am Echo3, thanks for joining me on the discussion on how to make a tracked vehicle in Kerbal Space Program. I would probably recommend using mods to do this instead of uh, the stock game if, if that's an option for you. But as is, here's how you can use the breaking ground parts to make a tracked vehicle. I will see you next time.